Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Improvement Showcase from the Commission on Excellence and Innovation in Health. Great that you've joined us this afternoon. My name's Nadia Masterson and I'm the Director of Partnerships at the Commission. I'd just like to start by acknowledging the land that I meet on today is the traditional lands for the Ghana people and that I respect their spiritual relationship with country and acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. I also acknowledge that each of you might be um, meeting on um, other traditional lands today, and I acknowledge those lands also. Welcome to you all. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the Commission on Excellence and Innovation in Health, we are the lead agency for innovation in healthcare. And we are all about bringing clinicians, community and other collaborators together to work towards this vision. To do this, we really need to create and imagine new ways of doing healthcare. What if the big idea was connecting the small ideas? That really is the essence of why we bring these improvement showcases together. It's for South Australians in South Australia and connecting us all so that we can share those ideas. The improvement showcases are on Thursdays at one o'clock or online whenever. So we record these sessions that you so that you can access them or share them with others that you know that might be interested at any time. We bring our healthcare teams together and provide a real safe space to explore what others have learned. And most importantly, we keep it simple. Don't make it hard. And we really appreciate the time that our presenters give us in coming and joining us for these sessions. And just to flag, if you've got a story to tell, if you succeeded in solving a problem or if you learned something while trying, it doesn't always come with a successful outcome, please make contact with us. Or equally, if you've got a theme that you'd like to be explored without the idea of the presentations necessarily, but a theme that you think is really important for us to talk about here in South Australia, let us know at our email address. So today um, we are partway through Series 9, Improvements Enabled by Technology. Last week we heard from the SA Dental Service about um, telehealth for dental emergency triage. And next week, we're hearing from Tom Beatty and Simon Windsor from Salem about bringing your own device and those challenges for consumers and their health service. But importantly today, we're very pleased to have Professor Maria McCredis. She's the Deputy Director and Theme Leader for SAMRI, the Women's and Kids Group. Um, and she'll be speaking on behalf of the Omega-3 Implementation Project. I'm a little bit biased, but I'm excited about hearing from Maria today. So before I hand over to her, just a little bit of housekeeping. Feel free to keep your cameras off while we pre um, Maria's presenting because that does help sometimes with the technology. Remember to keep your mics on mute. Um, at the end of the presentation, we'll stop recording and we'll have a question and answer session so that you can um, ask Maria your questions. So please jot down any thoughts you have in the chat while Maria's presenting. We will get to them at the end of the presentation or you can take yourself um, off mute and um, pop yourself on camera then. So without further ado, I will stop sharing the screen and welcome Maria. Thanks very much, uh, Nadia. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Vanessa Antiteatro, who's on, on, I see is on the, um, on, on the group, as well as Leanne March, um, both of whom have contributed hugely to um, our Omega-3 implementation team. Um, let me just get this to... So I'd like to share with you where we're at and some of the background for our Omega-3 screen and treat program in early pregnancy to prevent prematurity. Um, as I've already alluded to, it's been uh, a huge undertaking um, with many, many inputs and collaborators um, ranging from the scientists, the researchers, the biochemists, the pathologists, the obstetricians, the GPs, the GP practices, um, and, and everybody involved in, in pregnancy and perinatal care. 
um, the theme to today or this month in terms of improvement enabled by technology um, in, in terms of the relationship with our project um, really relates to the evaluation of how we best adopt a new evidence-based practice uh, to, to reduce prematurity in real life antenatal care uh, using some fatty acid technology. Um, the project is telling us a lot about how to overcome barriers and, and make the best use of facilitators to try and achieve 80% um, participation in the screening program, which seems to be the target number um, so that we can get the, the best outcomes for reductions of prematurity in the community. Uh, we need to achieve that 80% or greater participation um, to see, to see the, really the best outcomes. So why are we focused on prematurity? Um, every year, 15 million babies are born too soon. Um, prematurity for societies like ours in Australia um, are responsible for 85% of all of the perinatal complications and death um, and is the leading cause of death for children under five years of age. Um, many of the premature births, particularly from singleton pregnancies, um, about two thirds of them occur without known causes. Um, and we think we've, we've, we know about one of the new risk factors and, ha what, what, and how to do something about it. Um, the early preterm births, those that are born less than 34 weeks, are only about 20% of all premature births, but they're really the ones that um, cause the greatest problems uh, and complications for families and children. In Australia, we've got about 26,000 babies born preterm e each year, and a recent analysis by the Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance has estimated that the annual cost of prematurity to Australian health and education systems is of the order of about $1.4 billion. So any reductions um, uh, will be important um, for families and also our health system. Why omega-3 fatty acids? Well, for me personally, after about 30 years of working in the field, um, it was particularly gratifying to have the work acknowledged um, in the uh, part of the Australian Pregnancy Care Guidelines, some national guidelines that were updated at the end of 2020. Um, and the guideline committee co-chaired by Carolyn Homer and Jeremy Oates, um, eminent obstetricians and, um, and, and midwifery specialists. The key evidence to underpin this guideline, um, which advises supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids for women who are low to reduce their risk of having a baby born too soon, really came from uh, two key sources. Um, our 2008 Cochrane Review, which brought together all the randomised trials um, around omega-3 fatty acids and, and pregnancy outcomes. And that uh, Cochrane review showed that it was possible to reduce early preterm birth by 42% and preterm birth by 11% um, through supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids. Many of these studies were conducted um, over a long period of time, not necessarily with contemporary practice, uh, and also included quite specific subgroups and subpopulations. So marrying this Cochrane review up with um, the largest trial, which was actually trying to assess uh, um, omega-3 supplementation policy in contemporary Australian practice um, uh, was, was key. Uh, what we showed in our OREB trial um, was actually if you took a population-based approach where you actually were supplementing everybody regardless of their prematurity risk um, and using a broad population where taking supplements or prenatal supplements that already contain low-dose omega-3 fatty acids um, wasn't necessarily going to work. Uh, what our analysis showed was that the benefit was really limited to the women who were low or depleted in omega-3 fatty acids. And from a nutritional point of view, that makes a lot of sense. 
Um, and in the women with depleted status, we could reduce early preterm birth by about 77%. These data are now backed up by um, the ADORE trial, which was um, recently published from the US, and a number of cohort studies that all show beneficial associations below certain omega-3 thresholds. So if we take these data and, and the guideline, which basically advises supplementation um, for, for women who are depleted in omega-3 fatty acids, there are some real challenges in terms of what might be feasible. So the, the purpose of this implementation uh, project is really to deal with, with some of those issues. Um, the fact that up until now, there has been no widely available omega-3 screening program for pregnant women, particularly one that could be easily embedded in the health system. And we also have a gap in the knowledge but of health professionals as well as women about what action they may need to take as a result of their omega-3 test should one be available. So as I've already alluded to, the aim really was to set up an omega-3 precision nutrition strategy or a screen and treat approach that could be embedded into standard antenatal care so we could reduce the risk of prematurity in the community. Our partnership with SA Pathology um, has been absolute key in, 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 in being able to achieve this. Um, after various discussions with SA Pathology, it became very clear that the, um, the maternal serum antenatal screening program that SA Pathology runs for, uh, that is available to all women in South Australia before 16 weeks of gestation, was really the, the place to, to go. Um, what you see on the screen is the SA Pathology Maternal Serum Screening Test form. Um, and, and the big addition for us, what is the omega-3 tick box? What this allows is that without an additional blood test, um, it's, it's possible to, um, to have an omega-3 result. Uh, Omega-3 testing isn't currently offered, um, so we've set up a partnership with SAMRI, so we have joint oversight, so we could deliver this uh, quickly in a way that we could um, have joint oversight and governance uh, and basically um, uh, have an evaluation process that we can um, assess the adoption and, and the effectiveness going forward. All of our work uh, in the past was done on a, on a dried blood spot methodology, so using whole blood. But the main, one of the main changes and pivots we had to make was to actually revalidate all the work um, using serum to make sure that there were appropriate standards uh, and, and be able to use the existing workflows. So after, in the process of doing all of that, um, we also had set up health professional reference groups and consumer reference groups to actually um, uh, work out uh, how best to, to actually do the implementation after we've got the result. Some of our key learnings here were that, that the advice needed to be very specific, but simple at the same time. There needed to be enough flexibility for consumers and consumer choice um, in terms of supplementation for women who were low um, and vegetarian options needed to be um, important. Uh, the delivery of information needed to be immediate. So with the SA pathology result, whether it's available on the computer or a printout, um, there's a comment box to make sure that the immediate action for people that are low is actually listed um, there. Um, and then we have these, these brochures um, for both health professionals and consumers for people who, who may want extra information. And the photograph there also shows Dr. Rhiannon Smith, who's been a key uh, GP um, uh, obstetric, ob obstetric GP advocate and, and person on one of the reference groups. So the supplementation based advice that um, links with a guideline, but has also been tailored to make sure um, that 
that the information is simple and understandable for women who have a low serum level. The information is clear about taking um, supplementation until they reach 37 weeks to reduce their risk of early preterm birth and the suggested dose is as per the guideline. Um, for women with a moderate intake, uh, a moderate status rather, if they're already choosing to take a multivitamin mineral supplement, that this may continue. And for women that are replete, um, there's absolutely no benefit to any supplementation and in terms of reducing their risk any further because they're already at, at relatively low risk. What was important from a consumer point of view is that some of these women were, or many of these women were already choosing to take um, a perinatal supplement that had low dose omega-3. And we now know, particularly from the ADORE study, that up to 200, 250 milligrams per day is a low enough dose um, that won't cause any problems or, or any harm. So where are we up to? Um, uh, since we started almost a year ago, um, we've done more than 4,000 screening tests. We started off slowly, um, obviously during the middle of COVID, um, but we're consistently now testing over 100 women per week. Uh, we estimate that to get maximal coverage and to get to our magic adoption number, we need to be covering um, and, and testing and making sure people are getting the right advice of about 250 women per week. Um, so we've still got a way to go to um, facilitate our adoption um, and any thoughts and inputs in this regard are most welcome. Uh, to date, we've found that uh, about 92% of all omega-3 tests are ordered with other SAMSAS tests and only about 8% are ordered for omega-3 only, um, assuming that um, st some of these women are using uh, NIPT testing or, or some other form of testing. Uh, well over 80% of the tests are ordered through GPs, uh, which is entirely consistent with what would be expected from other SAMSAS tests. Um, although originally we probably were expecting that there might be more obstetricians involved, it does seem that a lot of this work is happening in primary health care. Um, all of the omega-3 tests ordered so far have been within the correct um, gestational age window, which is uh, rather pleasing. So how many women are testing low? We're having so far in the implementation project, we have 18% of women who are testing low. Um, and this just can't be predicted from only looking at diet. Um, and, and I guess shows the value of um, the screening program. So almost one in five women are, are testing low which is entirely consistent with what we expected from our randomised trial. And, and I've got the data there from our randomised trial, which covered the whole of Australia and 17.5% of women were testing low. So it does show the value of, of the trial work. So our next steps in terms of trying to enhance our adoption to that 80% um, level to achieve um, effectiveness. We are in the process of um, uh, looking at, at some other new strategies. Um, our work with SA Pathology has now allows us to review on a monthly basis where the tests are being ordered from. And I've just put up a little graph um, for the central Adelaide region. And you could see the suburbs that are doing particularly well with the testing and, and they're already almost at that 80% mark or beyond. And, and some of the suburbs where we need to do a little, little bit more targeted work to get them to the 80% mark. So this tool um, is probably another example of some of the technology that we can use uh, to better target our activities in regions and suburbs to complement the work that we might that we have been doing so far with um, just general promotion and, and, and population uptake. Up till now, we haven't um, had a specific consumer engagement strategy because we wanted to make sure that the health professionals um, 
uh, had all the information and were on board first. Uh, but over the next month, we are planning a, a digital media campaign uh, targeting uh, women in South Australia to actually give them uh, the knowledge to be able to ask about the omega-3 screening test when they actually see their GP or their health professional. We're also uh, looking at uh, a rollout of an omega-3 supplementation incentive, particularly in disadvantaged areas to promote equity of access uh, for those pregnant women who do screen low um, and are part of a disadvantaged population. The supplementation does cost about $30 to $40 uh, per month. Um, so uh, we have worked uh, in partnership with some of the industry to allow um, a supplementation to be available freely for, for those women as part of this, this um, rollout. So uh, when we, we have that organised and have approval for that, then that'll test out whether um, uh, that sort of approach is actually going to work in the more disadvantaged areas. So I think so far we've managed to demonstrate really great feasibility of an omega-3 screen and treat program that it can be truly embedded in, in standard antenatal care and does work. The ongoing evaluation to assess adoption and effectiveness and, and of course the economic evaluation are going to be absolutely necessary because these are the very data that are going to be required for the expanded implementation um, beyond South Australia and also make the South Australian implementation sustainable um, and look at the different business models, whether they be of um, a government subsidisation or health insurance subsidisation to actually um, make this sustainable in the long term. So thinking about some of the impacts of an omega-3 screen and treat program, well, even within the evaluation project, um, for women who are already screening low um, and are identified and follow the advice, their risk is, is significantly reduced already. Um, doctors are able to deliver best quality practice and it really does enhance South Australia's reputation for clinical innovation. Beyond the project, um, the data linking exercise with the Pregnancy Outcome Unit is really going to inform the extent of benefit. Um, and if we can successfully get to that over 80% mark, we are projecting that the benefit will be that of the order of about 15% of all early preterm births less than 34 weeks um, will be prevented. Um, the cost analysis, of course, becomes hugely important in terms of, of looking at the sustainable business models. So that's where I will leave it and um, pay special tribute to um, the, the vast array of people who have been uh, involved so far, uh, specifically call out um, uh, Karen Best and Philippa Middleton, uh, Rosalie Grivel, who had led the obstetric side of things, um, uh, Penny Coates, uh, Janice Fletcher and Enzo Ranieri from SA Pathology um, and Bob Gibson and Leo Gurr from the Fatty Acid Laboratory side. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maria. What a fantastic um, presentation. So that gave us a really nice outline of the work that you've done. What we might do is just stop recording here and that allows us to have a Q&A. Um, 